Today I'm about to go over everything that we know so far about the Forsaken DLC and we're going to start right now. What's up guys, Reckless here and welcome to Guardian Watcher. So, we have been getting a lot of information about the Forsaken DLC and for a little bit over a month now, and I haven't really said anything and that's for good reason. I wanted there to be a little more than just speculation that I bring to you guys, so I decided to wait a while. Now, this mini-series will be several parts. This is part one. So, in the event that I miss something, let me know in the comments and I will get to it in the next video. Now, many of us already know a lot of information about the Forsaken DLC, but there is still a lot of information that people don't know yet, and if you did learn something, then let me know in the comments as well. I am going to hit you guys with a lot of information, so be prepared, and all sources will be in the description. Warning! Spoiler alert! You have three seconds to leave this video, and if you don't, you will be getting spoilers. You have been warned. So the Forsaken DLC will be available on September 4th, 2018. The light level cap is going to be raised to 50 with a power cap of 600. So yes, Destiny 2 will become even more of a grind. We will be making our way back to the reef in order to fight a new fallen enemy called the Scorn who are pretty much very aggressive, they don't take cover, and they don't retreat. So be prepared for them to constantly come at you in waves. Now, the Scorn were once fallen, corrupted ether, suffering through strange experiments, repeated reanimations, and being buried alive in the heart of an asteroid that has mutated them. Prince Aldrin, which is the Queen's brother, will be the one that is going to release the Scorn from their prison, and possibly, I said possibly, kill Cade 6 in the process. Now, there is no word on whether Cade actually dies or if he's just badly injured. Either way, Cade is an EXO and I doubt that Bungie will pretty much keep him dead. I mean, Banshee 44 was reprogrammed 44 times and Cade was reprogrammed 6 times, you know? But anything can happen. The Forsaken DLC is gonna have more of a quote, Western revenge vibe, end quote. The Tangle Shore is the first place we will go in the DLC. It is a new part of the reef that we have never seen before. Quote, It's a collection of lashed together asteroids and rock. It's full of pirates and assassins and thieves. End quote. The bosses of the score are called barons and each one has committed terrible crimes. The main story starts off with a prison break, as I mentioned earlier, in the Prison of Elders that Kate has been filling for a long time. Baron Hunts are the worst of the worst criminals. One Baron is a sniper, another Baron is a giant melee focused character, and there are many more. We will be getting a lot of new weapons and armor, which to include new powerful exotics. Bungie said that they are working on armor perks as well. There will be a new weapon type. If you don't know, it is a bow. So not just a hunter, get to have fun to play with them. Now, the bow is a skill focused archetype. We will be getting a short, medium, and long range bows. And pulling the string more will increase the distance and damage the bow does. So make sure you're pulling that string all the way back. Some bows have a mini ability like shoot an arc bolt when they actually hit a surface. Also, there will be a new weapon type system. This new system will allow us to play using either Destiny 1, Destiny 2, or a custom system that allows a user to have three shotguns. Yes, three shotguns, and I will get to that in just a second. I mean, can you say OP? This is how the new weapon slot system will work. Auto rifles, pulse rifles, scout rifles, hand cannons, SMGs, bows, and sidearms will all take kinetic ammo. All of those weapons that I just mentioned can go in either the top or middle slots in your equipped weapon inventory, but not in the bottom. Shotguns, sniper rifles, and fusion rifles all take green ammo and can go in either the top or middle weapon slots only with the exception of the Legend of Acreus, which can go in the bottom slot as well. And equipping the Legend of Acreus in the bottom slot is the only way we will be able to have three shotguns at once. Linear fusion rifles, rocket launchers, grenade launchers, and swords 
take purple ammo, and can only go in the bottom slot of your equipped weapon inventory. Also, if you do not know, with the Forsaken DLC, we will be getting back random rolls. So, no more getting the same boring weapons with the same boring perks each time. That means that God rolls will be a thing again in Destiny 2. I don't know about you guys, but I'm definitely excited about that. On top of that, we will be getting an improved mod system that will allow us to customize our weapons the way we want. And Bungie is going to implement a new masterwork system where we will be able to move up in levels over time. Next, there will be 9 new subclass paths added to all the characters. And that is 3 per class. Let's start with the Hunter first. Gunslingers. Their new super will be called Blade Barrage, which knife trick melees fling out a fan of burning blades. In turn, killing enemies recharges your knife trick, and burning enemies also recharge your dodge. Blade Barrage doubles down on your knife skills to expel a volley of explosive knives. Arkstrider's new super will be called Whirlwind Guard, which you slide before a melee to unleash a staff-powered uppercut, and any melee hits increase your reload speed. All your arc abilities electrify your enemies, and subsequent melee strikes disorient them and refuel your abilities. Use your staff super like normal if desired, but Whirlwind Guard means that you can guard by spinning your staff, reflecting back projectiles, and tripling your staff's damage afterward. And the Night Stalker's new super is called Spectral Blades, which your melee smoke bomb heavily damages and slows those in its path. Nail the perfect precision kill against a foe to vanish and gain true sight. Spectral Blades drops you into a veil of shadows to slip behind foes and stab them before they know that you're even there. Next, let's go over the Titan. The new super for the Sunbreaker is called Siege Hammer, which you throw your hammer with the melee button, but it remains in the world, so it doesn't disappear like normal hammers do now. Risk retrieving it where it fell to fully recharge your melee ability and trigger health regen. The more solar ability kills you get, the higher your damage, and that stacks up to three times. Siege Hammer creates a flaming maul that hits like an earthquake and leaves behind flame tornadoes. Now, the Striker's new super is called Thunder Crash, and while airborne, melee to slam to the ground like a bunker buster, and gain super energy for your trouble. If you pick up ammo while sliding, you automatically reload your equipped weapon and increase weapon damage for a short time. Thunder Crash sends you hurtling great distances like a missile to hit your target area like a meteor strike. And next is the Sentinel. And the Sentinel Super is called Barrier Shield, which melees cause explosions, but all void ability damage also attaches a void detonator. And any subsequent damage causes the detonator to go off and attach detonators to enemies caught in the explosion. Grenade energy partially recharges for you and nearby allies when detonators trigger. Barrier shield can still be used for offense like normal, but holding guard creates a barrier wall of light that absorbs enemy attacks but allows ally attacks to pass through. And last but not least, let's talk about the Warlock. The Dawnblade's new super is called Well of Radiance, which melee attacks burn bad guys but empower allies. Transform your grenade by holding a button into a blessing, a projectile that heals allies and drops retrievable overshield orbs. Wow, that sounds amazing. Well, a radiance slams your solar sword into the ground, creating a wide radius area that rapidly heals and empowers your friends. Any ability that heals or empowers helps regen your non-super abilities. The Stormcaller's new super is called Chaos Reach, which tap the melee button to fling out a long distance electricity ball that eventually detonates and flings a lightning bolt straight downward. Arc kills sometimes create ionic traces, a spark of raw arc energy that travels across the ground toward you, which can be collected to recharge abilities. Chaos Reach fires a long-range blue beam of intense and focused damage dealing, which can be deactivated early to save energy. And for you 
awesome Void Walkers out there. The Void Walkers new super is called Nova Warp, which gives a new atomic breach melee ability that creates a void explosion at range. While holding the grenade button down creates a short range area explosion supernova. Any void ability kills now heal you and grant ability energy. Nova Warp empowers you with transdimensional hopping abilities, letting you repeatedly teleport short distances and then erupt in a burst of energy. I don't know about you, but all nine of those supers sound amazing and I definitely can't wait to get my hands on them. We will also be getting a brand new 4v4 game mode called Gambit which brings PvE and PvP together. On the director, Gambit will have its own node, similar to the Crucible and the Vanguard playlists. While playing Gambit, we will start off being able to see the team we are competing against. Both teams are in their own separate arenas and we will be facing the enemies that we fight in PvE. While fighting these enemies, they will drop motes for us to collect and then we have to put them in a bank in order to send a quote blocker end quote which is another enemy to our opponent's side. This blocker prevents the other team from putting in motes into their bank until they are able to kill the blocker. Also, when enough motes are put into the bank, one person from your team will be able to go into a portal and invade the other team's progression. And this invasion will last for a total of 25 seconds or until you die. A new raid is being introduced in the Forsaken DLC. Yes, I said raid, not raid lair. It's said that this new raid will have more bosses than any raid before, and I'm pretty sure they're including Destiny 1 as well. The raid is located inside the Dreaming City, which is the Awoken Homeland, and we won't be able to access it until the campaign is complete. There are many things that we will learn toward the end of the campaign that are only available once we beat the raid. After the campaign, there will be a quest that once complete, will give us access to the Dreaming City. Now, the Dreaming City is also infected by the Curse of the Taken, from which we will find out as we arrive for the first time. The city will change on a three-week cycle, so nothing will look the same on a week-to-week -week basis. It's said that the Taken Curse takes greater hold and the environmental art changes to suit. At the end of the cycle, a greater secret awaits discovery for Pinnacle players to confront. My guess is that we'll find a frozen and unstable oryx somewhere, but that's pure speculation. The Dreaming City was described as, quote, if you took the Vault of Glass and the Dreadnought and they had twins, if you took those twins and put them on the doorstep of Peter Jackson, raised them as his own, and then that's the Dreaming City, end quote. For those who don't know, Peter Jackson directed the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit series, as well as the Halo movie that has yet to go into production. At the center of the city is a great castle on a mountain called the, quote, Keep of Voices, end quote. This is where the new raid will be. Good thing about the Dreaming City is that there will be a lot of puzzles that we will have to solve, as well as a lot of hidden things that weren't there the first time around. The city that we first see at launch will not be the same Dreaming City that we see two or three weeks later. Those who are inside the raid will change what is going on outside in the Dreaming City, and it will contain some of the most difficult challenges and deepest secrets within the game. We will be getting two new vendors in the Forsaken DLC. One is called the Spider and will be at the Tangle Shore, and the other is our good friend from Destiny 1, Petra Venge, who will be located at the Dreaming City. After the campaign, the Spider cashes in a few favors to demand more work, hunting down other outlaws from the Prison of Elders as they spread out across the system, and we must confront them as they appear in random world locations, strikes, in the midst of gambit matches, or in revitalized and high level lost sectors on old destination planets. There will be a lot of new activities in the Forsaken. Loot caches provide offerings to the Blind Well, which is a vast cathedral of an area where three to six players can confront a new take on wave-based fights a la Court of Oryx, Archon's Forge, or Escalation Protocol. That means that one of those types of wave-based fights will be in that area. Quote, The entire arena gets shrouded in poison-taken gas except for the places you're allowed to fight. 
As you work your way around, you will get more and more real estate to fight in. It accumulates in a boss and you have to utilize those places you defended to take out the boss." End quote. Wandering around the periphery of the city drops flasks, allowing players to briefly glimpse into the Ascendant Realm to face special challenges, or travel along platforms or tunnels that don't exist in the real world to find secret chests. Mysterious portals usually hidden in hard to find spots link together distant portions of the destinations. Next, let's talk about the character UI. Now, the character UI will be getting a few changes and adding a Triumphs as well as a Collections tabs. According to the Destiny 2 Year 2 Vidoc, the Collections will hold Exotics, Weapons, Armor, Ghosts, Vehicles, and Flare. This section will also show you items that you recently discovered as well as item sets. Flare will hold all of our emblems and shaders. According to Bungie, there are 2,000 items to get in the Forsaken. Now, I want to assume that this is in the entire game and not just in the Forsaken DLC itself. We will be able to look at armor sets and weapons and find out how to acquire them. But as soon as we acquire an exotic, it will be in our collections and we will need specific materials in order to get them and this new system will be different for different categories. In Forsaken, for exotic weapons, there will be 14 Kinetic, 18 Energy, and 10 Power in total. Also, you do not need the Forsaken DLC in order to participate in the Triumphs and or Collections, because they will be available to all players of Destiny 2. Now, Triumphs will tie your achievements as well as lore together, and there will be two sections for Triumphs, All Triumphs and Triumph Medals. In All Triumphs, each Triumph is a subcategory of what you need to complete inside. You can also track your total score as well as track specific Triumphs. Completing Triumphs earn you titles that you can put above your name as well. Lore is another Triumph and we will be able to find things in the world but be able to come back to it inside the Lore Triumph. Now, this is pure speculation, but I'm guessing that Bungie is going to tie in the lore with the investigations that are already in the game, plus new ones that come with the Forsaken. Now, not too long ago, a new Destiny 2 roadmap was released, and I just want to focus on what is in the Forsaken aspect of it, which I have already mentioned pretty much everything except for we will be getting bulk shader deletion, four new crucible maps, 200 additional vault spade slots, giving us 500, new bounties, and come the Forsaken, power will matter in Iron Banner as well as Trials of the Nine. And for the last bit of news for this video, with the launch of the Forsaken, there will be what is called a quote, annual pass, end quote. This pass has three different content releases and in order, they are the Black Armory, which releases in winter 2018, Joker's Wild comes in the spring of 2019, and Penundrum releases in the summer of 2019. Each of these releases also brings a new season to the game. We also get bonus seasonal rewards with the annual pass as well as exclusive content for the people that purchase it. According to Deej, quote, these releases are a new way to deliver content, end quote. Within these different content releases, we will be getting end game challenges, new pinnacle activities, new weapons, armor, and vanity rewards to collect, new triumph records to collect, new and returning exotics, and new lore to discover. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to watch these videos as well. You never know, you just might like them. And if you do, leave a like, share them, and then come back for more, because you know you want to. Thank you guys for watching, and remember, Less guns doesn't mean less crime. And I'll see you guys next time.